is message passing the same as function calling? Now, I've been reading through comments left on some of the earlier videos in this series, and that, well, that's one of the questions that keeps getting asked. So let me give you the answer. The answer is yes and well, no, because message passing is the object-oriented way of calling functions. And if you're happy with that way of thinking, that's fine, but it's not the whole story. In a truly object-oriented language like Smalltalk, you can send any message to any object, even if a function with that name doesn't exist. For example, it would be entirely legitimate to send a message to an integer asking it to put itself into lower case. And in fact, I'll show you that later on. But Try calling functions that don't exist in C or Pascal and see how far you get. Not very far. I'm Hugh. This is another video in my series about the big ideas of object orientation. If you haven't watched the earlier videos, I suggest you do so by following the playlist, which is linked down below. To understand the difference between messages and function calls, we first need to go back to the 1970s when Smalltalk was being developed and also to the 1980s when programmers like me first had the chance to get our hands on a publicly available implementation of Smalltalk. To understand why messages were such a big deal, imagine yourself back in a time when, well, most programmers had never even heard of object orientation. We were using strictly procedural languages like C and Pascal. At that time, this is the language that I was using most of the time. Turbo Pascal. Now in Pascal, C and other procedural languages, the building blocks were freestanding functions or procedures or subroutines, that is, named blocks of code that you call by name when you wanted to run them. Now here's a freestanding function, and this is the code that calls it. And then along came Smalltalk. In Smalltalk, the functions were contained inside objects. An object was like a wrapper around both data and code. A programmer could not simply call a function by name, as in C or Pascal, so how could an object's code be executed? The answer is by sending a message to the object. So in a very simple sense, that's what message passing is. It's a route of communication with an object. In the 1980s, the idea of communicating with an object was new and bizarre. With the procedural language, functions were just there, waiting to be called by name. In an object-oriented language, functions were inside objects. So when we wanted to run the code of a function, we couldn't just call that function as we would in C or Pascal. We had to ask the object to execute the function. In other words, we had to send a message to an object, and if that object has a way, that is a method, of responding to that message, well, it does so. So an object's functions are its methods. The requests to execute those methods are the messages we send. Of course, since the 1980s, many of the ideas from Smalltalk have been adapted for use with existing languages. C was extended to make the object-oriented C++ language. Pascal was extended to make object Pascal and other languages well, such as C-sharp and Java, blended some Smalltalk-like ideas with a C-like syntax. And so message passing started to be seen as method calling, just like function calling, but on objects. But as I said earlier, in Smalltalk you can send any message to any object, and it's up to the object to decide how it needs to respond to any given message. Let's look at an example of this. Let's try sending some messages. I want to send the message as lowercase to the string hello. Let's do that now. And it returns the string in lowercase. Now the message here was handled by the as lowercase method. You can see that in the browser window up here of the string class. But what if I send this message to an integer? So I've got one, two, three, and I'm going to send the message as lowercase to that. Now, of course, an integer does not have a method to handle that message. And when I try and execute it, up pops this debug dialog. Now, pay close attention because this is where the magic happens. 
I'm going to click the debug button up here and it shows me the code, as you can see, of the does not understand method. It tells me that the small integer object does not understand the message as lowercase. Now here, does not understand is the name of a method that handles this problem. It turns out this is a method of object. You can see that down here in this browser. So it's a method, does not understand, is a named method of the object class. And that's the ancestor class of most other classes, including small integer. So here, when I tried to send a message which is not defined as a method for the integer, well, a message not understood object is created as an exception. You can see that here. The default way of handling this exception is to pop up a debug window, which is what just happened. But let me shut this down now. I could deal with that uh, problem, with that exception myself if I wished, and let me do that. I can do that by putting this bit of code into a block. That's some code inside square brackets and then dealing with the exception object that's returned, which is a message not understood object. When that's caught, I pass it into another block as an argument named exception. Then this code shows the message provided by that exception object. And I want to write that message into a transcript window. So I've opened this transcript window down here. Let me just execute this code now so you can see what happens. And there it goes. And here's the message in the transcript window. So that's an example of how I can send any message to any object, even when that object does not have a method with the same name as the message. In that respect, message passing and function calling are clearly different. Go into C and try to call a function that doesn't exist and your program, well, it won't even compile. That said, if you find message passing an odd idea, but you are happy with the idea of method calling, well, that's fine. As I said earlier, the distinction between function calling and message passing was far more important in the early days of object orientation when the idea of communicating with objects rather than simply calling functions was very unfamiliar to most programmers. If you've been confused about message passing, I hope this video has helped a bit to clarify what it's all about. Remember that this is just one video in a whole series about the ideas behind object orientation from Smalltalk onwards, and you can find the link to the whole playlist of that series down below. Now, thanks for watching and to be notified whenever I upload new videos, be sure to subscribe and click the bell, and I'll see you again soon.